Hi, my name is Paul from Physics High, and today I would like to give you an overview of Module 6 Electromagnetism, and in particular the first inquiry question, which deals with charge behaviour in electric and magnetic fields. Now, a quick reminder, anything that I produce here will actually be available in a printable version, so you can access that via the link in the description below. Now, the module is divided up into four key inquiry questions. The first deals with charges. In fact, the inquiry question says, what happens to stationary and moving charges when they interact with electric fields and magnetic fields? For summary, I'm just going to write electric fields and magnetic fields and charges. The next inquiry question basically says, under what circumstances is a force produced on a current bearing conductor in a magnetic field? In essence, it's the motor effect. The third inquiry question asks, how are electric and magnetic fields related? And in essence, what we will look at is the concept of electromagnetic induction. And the final question, how has the knowledge of the motor effect been applied to technological advances? And in essence, I'm going to be talking about applications. So those are our four key inquiry questions, and obviously I've simplified them in simple words just to save us the space here. I'm going to examine those four key inquiry questions, and it's important for you to understand what those questions are, and that everything that we develop underneath it relates to that particular inquiry question. So let's start with our first inquiry question. Now our first inquiry question really looks at charge behavior in two types of fields. The first is its behavior in an electric field, and then we look at a magnetic field. When we examine its electric field, we are really looking at how does it respond or how does it behave in two situations. So we're interested in its behavior, but in essence, we ask what is its behavior if it's stationary and what if it's, if it's moving. In essence, constant velocity. Now, so you're looking at the mathematical principles and obviously an electric field will apply a force on a charge. So if it's stationary, it will start to accelerate and you need to know how to analyze that in a mathematical way using mathematical models, such as the formulas F equals EQ, for example, and obviously related also to the work done. So we have work is equal to V, where V is the voltage that is being applied. And of course, that also then can be done in terms of when it's moving. And so in many cases, if the particle is moving perpendicular to the electric field, it will actually undergo projectile motion. Now, I already hinted at the fact that when a charge is moving in an electric field, it's accelerating. And so the other aspects we need to examine then is the concept of energy. In other words, what we're saying is this work is done on the charge. And so you need to appreciate the mathematical analyses of the energy changes in terms of what happens with the charge in an electric field. So that looks at the electric field aspect. The other aspect is charges and conductors moving in a magnetic field. Now we're specifically interested in charges, and so what we note is that when charges move in magnetic fields, they experience a force perpendicular to their motion, to their velocity. Whereas an electric field will apply a force regardless of the charges, whether it's stationary or moving, a charge has to be moving in order to experience a force in a magnetic field. And what we end up getting is circular motion. And so you have the now an aspect of that the force that a charge experiences in a magnetic field is actually the centripetal force. And that allows you to establish relationships between the mass, the radius and the velocity, and obviously the magnetic field strength in various situations, including of course, and of course the charge itself. And lastly, you need to be understanding how these two behaviors are different in terms of the electric field effect and the magnetic field effect. Now, there is one tip I want to leave you here, here is, is that the importance that electron flow or charge flow of electrons is opposite in direction in terms of what we refer to as the conventional current. So for example, in electric fields, the lines represent the force a positive test charge will experience. And so therefore, any electron will experience a force in the opposite direction of those lines. In terms of magnetic fields, please remember that when we use the hand rule to determine the direction of the force, the thumb represents the conventional current, which means that if you're dealing with electrons, you need to flip 
the direction of the flow because it's conventional current based. Well, I hope that it helps you understand this particular inquiry question and as it fits in the other inquiry questions within this particular module. Please remember to like, share and subscribe. Put a comment down below if this has been helpful for you. And please consider supporting me by buying me a coffee. The link is in the description below. My name is Paul from Physics High. Take care and bye for now.